And now we are in the kitchen with Tony from Gusto Pizza. And we're going to make a whole meal here today with a couple of other great guys from Gusto Pizza, too. But we're going to start with the appetizer. What are we going to make? Well, we're going to put together, we're going to slice some South Union baguettes and uh, rub a little olive oil on there and toast them. And then okay. we're going to make a roasted red pepper pesto and spread that on there, put some goat cheese, toast them a second time, and then top them with a little balsamic reduction and right. some fresh basil. That sounds great. Let's get started. All right. So I'll hand these over to you if you want to brush those with a little bit of sure. olive oil. And the olive oil has some rosemary in it. Exactly. All right, and then you're going to put these in the oven. Yep. Just We're going to put these in a, a convection minutes. oven, real high temperature, just for a couple of minutes to okay. get them uh, lightly browned, and then right. we'll put together a pesto. All right. All right. All right, we're all toasted up. We are. So What's next? The fun part, we're going to make a roasted red pepper pesto today. Oh, awesome. So we'll start off with the obvious. So some roasted red peppers, some mancini peppers. And then we're going to add a little bit of garlic. Fresh garlic is important, so please don't use granulated garlic. <laughs> we're going to add a little bit of honey, which will kind of soften up the brininess of the peppers and make that roasted red pepper a little more pronounced. And salt and pepper. Okay, so you want everything to mix equally. It's mm -hmm. almost kind of like a thick, uh, kind of pasty sauce. Um, but we are gonna add our final ingredient. This is important as well that you add this last because you wanna keep the texture of this as Pecorino Romano. Okay. So you wanna add this last and just gently fold that into the into okay. the mixture here. All right, so to you're, not gonna, the, you're not gonna turn the food processor just, back on? Just, just a couple okay. quick little jolts, but um, we'll start off a little bit here. About three quarters of a cup of Romano. And like I said, just want to gently give it a couple turns. So, and we're going to add a little bit more. It's a little runny. And then we'll taste it too as well. So It's got to be hard to overdo. So th <laughs> this is important. Uh, not only does it add the texture, but it also adds a salt component to, oh, okay. to kind of round off the, the pesto. We did the first passing through the oven with the olive oil and the crostini mm -hmm. just to you know, get that nice firm canvas. So we're going to add a little bit of our, our pesto on here. And again, you want to, less is kind of more. You don't want to go too light, but um, if you add too much, it'll just get, be a soggy. Right. The crostini should be crusty. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so add a little bit of the goat cheese, and we'll toast it one final time. Then we'll pull it out and finish it with the balsamic glaze and some fresh basil leaves. Wonderful. It's good stuff. Okay, we're going to put these in the oven, final pass. All right. All right, they look wonderful. The cheese is just a little tiny bit browned. Okay, let's Beautiful. finish these off. All right, so we're going to drizzle a little bit of balsamic reduction on top of these. All right and a little bit of fresh basil from our friend's farm in Menlo, Iowa, so. All right, well, let's try. These are beautiful. Mm. And delicious. Tony, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, thank you. All right, we've had our appetizer. Now it's time to make salad. And Josh is here with me from Gusto Pizza to do that. And this is a, a salad that uses goat cheese, right? Yeah, and this is one of my favorite salads. Uh, we call this the quinoa continental. And uh, it incorporates uh, a 
mixed greens. Today we've got just a traditional spring mix. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some quinoa, which is great not only uh, for its health benefits, but it also adds, adds a nice texture to the salad. Uh, a little bit of red onion. Uh, we've got dried cranberries and pepidou peppers. Wonderful. And okay. this is something that you could change up seasonally depending on, on what kinds of produce is available. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what we like to do a lot of times in the colder months um, is maybe incorporate butternut squash oh, is a nice addition to this salad. So there are a lot of different varieties, and, uh, different options that uh, would work pretty well. All right, well, let's mix it up. Okay. So I've got the quinoa. And it's just cooked quinoa, nothing extra in it. Right. Mm -hmm. You may want to cook that in a little bit of vegetable stock to add some flavor. That, that's a nice way to do it as well. Our red onion. All right. Dried cranberries. And then the pepidou peppers. All right. And then we've got our balsamic Romano vinaigrette. And you add the goat cheese at the end? Yeah, I just like to keep the cheese on, on the top. Um, just kind of visually appealing, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. And then for the goat cheese, we'll just crumble that over the top. There we go. Right, We've got perfect. our quinoa continental salad. Wonderful. Let's dig in. That is wonderful. Josh, thank mm. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's time for the main course. And Joe is here from Gusto Pizza. And we're going to make pizza. We right? are going to make pizza. All right, with goat cheese. Yes, we call this the Vincent Van Goat. We're going to have rosemary olive oil, honey ham, Genoa salami. We're going to have some fried peppers capers, and of course, goat cheese. Oh, wonderful. So every uh, pizza obviously starts with the crust. Yes, and if you want to know about making pizza crust, you can go to our website. We have already done a, a pizza crust lesson that's up on the web. So, we have. But now, now we're at the point where now it's time to it. roll it out. So after it's rested, you're going to push it down a little bit. We're going to add just a little bit of flour. just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, sometimes it can be sticky, depending upon even how the weather is. So I start and I'll just push down in the center and work it out. Okay. And you're not a throw the pizza crust in the air guy? Uh, you can be, but that's a little more difficult. All right. So you're, um, you're someone, showing us how someone we can do it Someone invented this a long right. time ago and it's much easier. <laughs> okay. So just like you would with any roll out each way, just kind of keep going. And you can go however thick you want, however thin you want. We'll just go in and we'll just pinch up a little bit of a crust because everybody likes crust, right? Yep. Kind of helps. Everybody here. <laughs> kind of helps keep all the toppings in. So we don't have a red sauce on this one. It's a little non-traditional. So we are going to do a rosemary olive oil. All right. Um, simple, just fresh, fresh uh, rosemary chopped up. We're going to brush it, and on this you want to brush it all the way out to the edge. Um, it'll give your crust a nice uh, brown, and it'll give it some flavor too. So you're not just eating a boring, bland crust. And with pizza, it's one of those things where there's really no wrong way. If you like it, you like it. So if you want to put a bunch on, put a bunch on. If you want to go limited, you can go limited. All right. Next, we're going to do the honey ham and the Genoa salami. So you just kind of layer it out. Same with the toppings. If you want to load it up, load it up. Um, we at the shop, we kind of try to find the balance between enough flavor without overwhelming. Uh, that makes sense. And do you have to worry about if you put too much on it that it, uh, it, it won't, the dough won't actually get baked all the way through? Does that interact? That does too. And then you're, if you put too much on it, your, your ingredients won't cook evenly. You'll have mm -hmm. cold spots and it can just mess it. We're just kind of lightly folding this ham. Wonderful. <laughs> if it'll stay if folded. It'll stay folded for us. All right. Then we're going to add the goat cheese real quick. Goat cheese is kind of a little messy, so 
but you'll just crumble it out on there. I like quite a bit of goat cheese, so. All right. And goat cheese does it it doesn't melt quite like it doesn't. Some of the it'll other it, it's not gonna melt and flatten out. Um, but it'll get it'll get softer and you'll take it warming it up will you'll have a, a bit more flavor on it when okay. it's warmed up rather than eating it cold or even at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So the fried peppers, you just buy them canned. If you want to fry your own, you can fry your own. They smell wonderful. And then, and then capers. Capers, and the capers of have... Of course, on most pizzas capers right now. Capers and a little, little bit of garlic on there. So... Yeah, is that ready to go in the oven? Ready to go in the oven wonderful. now. So we have this at 450. We're going to set it in. Oh, that looks beautiful. And you bake that at 450. 450, we went about five minutes, spun it around, went about five minutes or more. And we like to doctor this one up after it comes out. So what we do is we take a little bit of this balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, wonderful. It adds a nice little sweetness that balances a lot of the salt that's on there. And then we'll sprinkle some Romano to kind of soak up that oiliness. It adds a nice little nuttiness and finish to it. So. Terrific. All right, let's All right. try it. Mm. Wow, that is delicious. I'm gonna have to put goat cheese on all my pizzas now. Joe, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wonderful being here.